Hello, yes, it's Joe here for Joyrider TV. Today, we're gonna be looking at the parts of the Hobie 16 and what they do. Oh, yes. Yes, we're gonna be taking a pretty detailed look at the whole of the Hobie 16 at its component parts and what it is that they're for. Uh, we're going to start at the front of the boat and gradually work our way back to the back. Uh, so stay tuned if you want to see the whole thing. So we're starting off right at the front where we of course have got the hulls and attaching the bridle wires to the hulls we've got the bow tangs. These may look different on your boat if it's slightly older. The bolt for the bow tangs uh, goes on to first on the inside a plastic nut and then a stainless steel nut. Attached to the bow tangs we have of course got the bridle wires. These are the two wires that join the forestay where the bridle wires meet in the middle here. We have a shackle which attaches two chain plates. We're using two because then the elastic will pull the forestay taut when the jib is up. This is the forestay. And then we've got a clevis pin here, which is holding the tack of the jib to the chain plate. So then coming slightly back, the next and most obvious thing here is the jib. The jib on a 16 is a fully battened jib, which means the battens, these hard pl plastic pieces, run the full length of the jib. The reason we've got a fully battened jib on a Hobie 16 is because it does put a bit more power into that sail. But the reason that we need battens in the first place is because anything that is outside of this straight line otherwise would flap badly. Controlling the jib, we have got the jib sheets. On a 16, these have got a two to one purchase. The jib sheets are used for changing the tension in the jib so we can make it tighter or looser. And then those sheets come back to the jib traveler. The jib traveler we use to change the angle of attack of the sail, which we would alter either for point of sail or for wind strength. The front beam, on a 16, it's got quite a curve in it. And then under the front beam, we've got this part, which is the dolphin striker. This piece is there to give the front beam more strength because all of the load is pointing straight down. So the dolphin striker is there to resist against that push straight down. Now, if you've got a slightly older Hobie 14, you may not have a dolphin striker on there and you can fit one, but you only need to if you're gonna be using the trapeze. Continuing our tour, we're back on the hull and this part coming out of the hull is called the pylon. The part that fits onto there is this piece, which is called the corner casting. So we're now at the base of the mast where there's a few bits going on. The first one is the jib halyard, which on this boat is this yellow line. This is the rope that's used for hoisting or pulling up the jib. Then this is actually what's called the Aussie system on the jib halyard. So it finishes off in a cleat here and then ties off in a cleat there. On the other side of the mast, we've got the main halyard which is the line that's used for hoisting or raising the mainsail that goes all the way to the top of the mast. And then the next one back, and then the next one back that we have is the downhaul. On the more modern 16s, we've got a six to one downhaul system. And we use the downhaul to put shape into the sail 
and then after we've initially put shape into the sail, any more downhaul that we pull on is going to start to flatten the sail, making it less powerful. Quite a significant part of the boat, of course, is the trampoline on a 16 or a 14 or a 15. Uh, we've got a three piece trampoline. That's one, two and three being the strip at the back. On other boats, you may have a one piece trampoline or a two piece. Part of the trampoline is the toe straps where you can put your feet under while you're sailing. That will give you some security on the boat. The trampoline should always be nice and tight. Next, we've got the sidebars. The 16, of course, has got the famous raised trampoline and is one of the fewer catamarans that actually need sidebars. But this is actually where we'll trapeze off when we really get going. This is called the shroud anchor pin. This is where the shroud attaches. The shroud is the wire. We have one on each side and these are two of the wires that hold the mast up. The third being the forestay, which is the one that goes forwards. So we've got the shroud anchor point. Then we've got this twisty bit, which I like to call a twisty bit, but Hobie call it the toggle. And then we've got the chain plate where we can determine how much mast rake we're going to have on the boat. Fourth hole from the bottom is pretty standard. Then moving back slightly, we've got the trapeze wires. The Hobie 16 as standard has double trapeze wires. That's two on each side. These also anchor at the hounds. To see how all the rigging attaches, please check out this video on how to rig a Hobie 16 mast. Towards the bottom of the trapeze wires, we've got the handle. This is actually spliced onto the wire. Then we've got the eye. Going through the eye, we've got the trapeze rope. We have this part, which is, Hobie call it a rope lock, but it's commonly known as a dog bone. This is what we use to adjust the height of the trapeze. And then when we want to hook in, this is what we hook into. This is called the J and H. The trapeze rope, as we come down, is attached to a shock cord elastic, which on our boats, we go through the hole in the trampoline. And then for a bit of extra stretch, we'll take that forwards around the dolphin striker and then to the other side. So then with the three piece trampoline, we've got this, which is called the trampoline lacing, which is the rope which is used to make the trampoline tight. Corner castings at the back, of course. Holding the corner castings to the pylons, we've got these bolts. The purpose of these bolts is just to stop this from lifting up. And then we've got perhaps the most significant part of the boat, the mainsail. The mainsail is also fully battened and on a 16, it's very powerful. Then at the bottom of the mainsail, we have the boom. The boom runs from the mast all the way to the back bottom corner of the sail, which is called the clue. And then the rope which holds the clue is called the clue outhaul because it pulls it out. At the other end of the boom at the front, we've got this, fit we've got this fitting, which is called the goose neck because it looks like a goose's neck. Of course. And then at the back of the boat, we've got the back beam, also known as the rear crossbar. On some boats, the back beam has an integrated track for the traveler. 
on others, the traveler track might actually be external and riveted on. So running in the track of the rear crossbar, we have the traveler car. We use the traveler on a catamaran to adjust the angle of attack of the mainsail, which we would alter for changes in wind strength or if we're sailing on a different course. To control the traveler, we have the traveler control line. It runs through the cleat. The cleat is on a swivel. On your boat, your cleat might actually be attached to the traveler car, but on our 16s, they're fixed in the middle. So through the cleat, through this fair lead, through the middle of the traveler car, and then that will finish its journey at this eye on the back of the back beam where it's tied off with a figure of eight knot. Now, if we run our way all the way to the other end of that traveler line here, this actually forms the main sheet. The main sheet is the rope that we use to control the tension in the mainsail, and it is the main sheet which is going to stop you from having that dirty capsize. Whenever you're sailing the boat, you should always have a hand on the main sheet and get familiar with the action it takes to uncleat the main sheet so in a gust you know that you can easily let it off. We attach the main sheet to the boom. On our boats we use a snap shackle which is very good because it's very quick and easy to use. You might just use a normal shackle and then coming back slightly we arrive at the rudder assembly So with the rudder assembly, we've got the rudder blades. We then have an upper casting and a lower casting. This could also be known as the rudder stock. Do check out the video on servicing your Hobie rudders if you'd like to know more about the rudder system. On the top of the other upper casting, there's a bolt for adjusting the angle of the rudder when we put it down. You may not have this bolt if you have got a slightly older boat. Then into that casting, we have the tiller arm. This is the arm that gives us the leverage on the rudders. And then connecting the two rudders together is this bar, which is called the tiller connecting bar. But we like to call it the conrod. Now on the port side of the conrod, there'll be some sort of adjustment. Like on here, we've got a screw thread. This is so that we can adjust the angle of the rudders so that they're in optimal position for sailing. And then with this system, we've just got a piece of elastic shock cord and a clip which holds that on there. And then finally, the bit that we steer the boat with is called the tiller extension. It's quite long so that we can use it when we're out on the trapeze. This is also known as the stick. But oh my goodness, I've almost forgotten the most important part of the boat. How could I have done that? I do not know. The most important part of the boat is the bungs. First thing you should do when you go to prepare your boat is put the bungs in. So there we go, I think that's pretty much covered it all. For, like I said, for the parts up the mast, do check out the rigging the Hobie 16 mast video. 
and for the parts of the rudders, do check out the servicing your rudders video. So I hope that was useful, informative and slightly entertaining. If you'd like to support Joyrider TV, you could get a t-shirt like mine from totaljoyrider.com. All the proceeds from there go directly to Joyrider TV to help making these informative and entertaining videos. Thanks very much in advance. So thanks very much for watching. I'll be back soon on Joyrider TV with some more.